Well, hello again. We're going to start uh, this new uh, video on uh, today. We're going to seal the seams, which I have referred to and headed in that last video. I had already done uh, because I'd had the problems with the microphone and then the, getting rid of those <laughs> videos off the camera. I deleted the one where I had taken the toothbrush and um, sealed the seams here. So basically, I've already taken. Uh, some straight mixed epoxy, you know, part A and part B, two to one, and uh, mixed it up, painted it along the seams, uh, only about half an inch out. Uh, it's just beyond the three-eighths line that we used for our, uh, our tie wire drill marking. Um, but I wanted to get, to, you know, epoxy into those open edges so that when you want to get to put the gel magic on next, uh, you will, um, the, the epoxy won't uh, get sucked in. Uh, along the, a dry edge and then maybe uh, give you a weak area. I wanted to fill up any of those dry edges uh, seam on the edges of the plywood. The, ed the eye uh, edge of the plywood gets is really porous and so it'll suck a lot of uh, epoxy in. So you want to pre-wet those edges, those cut edges, and especially with the bevels on them which even opened up more uh, uh, surface area for uh, absorption. And the other thing I wanted to say uh, was wrong in that last uh, in the last video on the, on the henos, it's one heno, heno for many henos. It's not uh, uh, the uh, takshi is only when you're talking with people, you know, many boys, many girls, you know, then you use the plural. But one book, many books is the same word, same with strings. So we had many henos. Hemo, hemo, heno, hemo, hemo. H I M O, hemos. Okay, let me uh, get. Uh, I'm going to try something different. I'm going to try uh, a low angle when we do this. And I got to thinking today that uh, this being another jump stitch gel magic day, uh, I think I'm wearing the same outfit. I know I am. Uh, one of the very first videos I ever did uh, on YouTube uh, was when I was building the uh, uh, OMP pod. And I must have been a winner because I had this coat on and I was rambling on about um, um, using the gel magic on the jump stitching and I didn't realize until I was notified later by uh, my friend Dick Anderson down at System 3. He said, Warren, you didn't have your gloves on. So. But I'll have my gloves on. It, buddy, you forget it's such a clean method to do. But let I me mean, uh, reset up and I want to get to my other camera. Uh, or get the camera angle down to see if this is going to work. So we'll come back with the jump stitching of this hole. Okay, I got my, my uh, tube of gel magic and a new nozzle on. I'll build up some head pressure here. You can see the color as it builds up in the tube. It's going to start dribbling out here pretty soon, so I'll stick it in the corner. Probably should have. Okay, here we go. Is it down there? I find it's better sometimes if you go in the direction that you want to go. Kind of drag it back where it goes through the uh, under the wire. And get a really good good bead up here at the tops of the corner where there will be a lot of tension later. And sometimes I'll take the uh, tube on the outside, which I'm doing now and stick some in this outside edge. It's just oh I'm dribbling. Basically that's what it's all it is. Remember all this gets covered with 
fillets and glass tapes, but if you have some big windrows, it's nice to take your tool here and scrape them down. And I'm getting... Got a big gap right down in here, so we'll put a lot of it in. I probably should have put some backing tape in there, but it'll sag in and fill the hole. pressure up and continue on. <coughs> me. As you can see it doesn't take long before I'm off camera. Something else I'll do too is I'll take like a piece of plastic tubing I've cut in half and just kind of come along and even out any of the strokes. And that's pretty much it. Well, I have the, uh, the gel magic jump stitching part done. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and take my tarp here and um, spread it over the boat, put the, hull, the heater in first and then put the tarp on top and then put a little bit of heat to it. It's cold enough in the shop now that uh, the gel magic is going to uh, uh, need some help to cure. Uh... Okay, we're going to be taking out some bolts. Bolts and nuts first. Well, that's a lot easier on the wrist <laughs> using a regular hand screwdriver. They're still in here. Then we'll do the wires next, so. It's been uh, four days since I've, uh, or is it five now since I jump switch. And uh, it's all nice and hard, completely dried. I had the uh, heater going for a couple days and then it's been two days with it being off so Down here, I'm getting down the part where the distance between the bottom of the boat and the platform is lessening. wires are all gone now, or excuse me, not the wires, the bolts, nuts, all taken out, put back in their jar, back in the cabinet, who knows what boat they'll build next, I have no idea. Uh, so I may go uh, change, uh, tip down here and we'll uh, get into uh, cutting the wires out. There wasn't any loud sounds or anything when the uh, uh, bolts came out, so I don't expect anything with the, I, well, I re I've never popped a a sink using the gel magic to jump stitch so and I got my my nibblers here ah. I'm gonna before I get into uh, doing the taping I'm going to remove these uh, clamps 
rail material should have had plenty of time to set. I'm going to leave that top one in for the time being. Then you come on the outside and just pull them on out. Think of it as pulling teeth. <laughs> You're the dentist this time. So you can see I pulled all the ones out here except for the top one yet. I'll leave it in for a little bit. Am I still in here? Well, I got all the bolts out. And I got some wires I want to pop yet. I decided to take the rails off too. Uh, as I was taking them off, uh, the clamps off, I was noticing that the the side panels uh, really didn't move that much. Uh, I added the uh, outside rails to the inside rails and then put on an extra bag. And um, so the, uh, when I, actually when I added the outside rails uh, to the uh, inside rails, uh, I had uh, the inside rails had already taken a set down and tipped out. So it's gonna come out perfect. So by the time I get around to needing the, uh, the rails, uh, they'll be shaped outward and downward because this thing, like I said before, has a lot of curve to the shear. So let me go back in and we'll uh, pick up. Where's my? Oh, here's my new one. And we'll go up here, take this last wire out. Sometimes I leave these in, but I've got a nice gob of uh, magic on the outside here. And it's not going to go anywhere. There, no cracks, no, no fussle, no hassle. So now all I got to do is go in and uh, clean up the edges and uh, start uh, filleting next. So, but this one's probably long enough that uh, look, my uh, can of bolts. I uh, emptied this this summer when I went to the dump run into the scrap metal scrap bin. It was full of tie wires, <laughs> so I built a few boats. This will close out this part. We'll come back next. Uh, you can see I still got my bar in here for the funky recurve. It just just a little bit to hold it up. It's not not much tension at all. Just a little bit to keep it from wanting to take a set back in again. Uh, so this will be it. We'll come back next time on uh, cleaning up the uh, the gel magic joints, and then we'll um, uh, wet out and. Uh, We'll get some mix up some straight epoxy and wet out the holes for the bolts and then we'll uh, fill it. So I may take my time and do a lot more filleting. I may just do that the whole next thing on uh, filleting the seams to give a, a, probably my best comprehensive <laughs> show to date. So we'll see you next time.